Could a hypercane end all life on Earth? Wait, what's a hypercane? Well, a hypercane is like a hurricane on steroids. With wind speeds of over 800 kilometers per hour and a duration of several weeks, a hypercane could be large enough to cover the whole of North America, while also reaching 40 kilometers high into the Earth's upper stratosphere. It's pretty safe to say this would cause global devastation, and it was first proposed by Professor Kerry Emanuel. Well, hyper, of course, means something that's uh, fantastically out of bounds, and the cane comes from hurricane. So a hypercane is an extreme tropical cyclone that forms if the sea surface temperature rises above 50 degrees. And it's terrifyingly huge. Professor Emanuel believes it may actually have happened once before, potentially having contributed to the mass extinction of the dinosaurs. But before we get too carried away, luckily for us, hypercanes are just theoretical, at least for now. Well, I uh, coined that term back in the 1980s when I was working on a theory uh, that governs the maximum intensity, the maximum wind speed you can have in a hurricane. But there was an anomaly that just kept coming up. If you tried to push the temperature of the ocean too high, you couldn't solve the equations. They didn't have a solution. And it was very puzzling to me. So Professor Emanuel had to come up with an entirely new theory, the hypercane. Well, hypercanes would form if uh, the ocean temperature became extraordinarily large, particularly if it did so in a small region a few hundred kilometers across. By large, I mean in excess of 50 degrees uh, centigrade. The reason the temperature matters so much is because hurricanes form above warm oceans, when hot air rises and cold air comes rushing in to replace it, creating a spiraling and growing storm cloud. The hotter the seas, the greater the cloud. Okay, so the largest recorded tropical storm is Typhoon Tip, a typhoon that emerged in 1979 and affected multiple countries. The storm reached peak sustained wind speeds of 305 km per hour, with a wind diameter of 2,220 km. That's big enough to cover around half of the United States. Oh, quickly since we're here. If you're wondering what the difference is between hurricanes, typhoons and cyclones, it turns out Nothing, at least nothing scientifically. All three words describe the same weather system, a tropical storm, and the difference is as simple as which part of the world the storms form over. Back to the hypercane. Will we see another one of them anytime soon? Well, there's no doubt sea temperatures are rising and making hurricanes more powerful. Well, so in today's climate, um, hurricane wind speeds at the surface can get up to maybe close to 90 meters per second. And we expect that to go up as we continue to warm the climate. And in fact, we're beginning to see evidence in observations that it is going up. So maybe we'll have a 95 meter per second hurricane or 100 meter per second. And because the destructive potential of, of wind storms goes up very quickly with wind, at least as the cube of the wind, that three or four meters per second is actually a lot, uh, makes the storm potentially a lot more damaging. So this is something to watch. If ocean temperatures did continue to rise above 50 degrees C, there's no doubt hypercanes would cause devastation on the ground. But higher up, there'd be a potentially even more damaging consequence. Because a hypercane would reach so high that it would actually interact with the ozone layer. And one of the things that interested us about the computer models of the hypercane is Hypercanes are pumping up all kinds of material into the middle stratosphere, like water vapor, that really don't belong there. Uh, would, through a series of chemical reactions, lead to the destruction of ozone, which would endanger life on the surface. And we pose that as a potential link between bolide impacts and mass extinctions that are thought to have gone along with them. Hypercanes uh, could be explanation for the extinction of the dinosaurs. Without the ozone layer's protection and with continuing or even multiplying storms, life would struggle to survive on the surface. It really could lead to the end of life on Earth as we know it. So here's the big question. How likely is all this? It's impossible to have missed the fact that global sea temperatures are rising. But luckily, we are a long way from 50 degrees C temperatures and any resulting hypercanes at the moment. The Indian Ocean is the warmest, and even that only has a sea surface temperature of around 30 degrees C in places. I think it's time for some good news. 
in today's climate, the warmest ocean temperatures we see in the tropics, we expect that they will continue to go up maybe to 32 or 33 degrees, but not to 50 degrees. In fact, we don't think that's really happened even in the Earth's past. It's not something that will happen as a result of natural or even man-made climate change. It's not something to worry about. So without any asteroid-induced, world-changing events, we're unlikely to ever see a hypercane, as fascinating as the name and theory may be. But perhaps the dinosaurs weren't so lucky.